that don't know, we are doing a series of community roundtables. And so there was one a couple of months ago. We've got this one today with Philip, and there's several more coming up that we'll be announcing very shortly. So lots more to come. For today's session, we are going to be monitoring text chat. Uh, please note, of course, that we're not going to be able to answer all questions at once. There's a lot that will be flowing quickly. We are trying to monitor it and keep up. Uh, we also recognize this format does have some limitations, so please, please be patient. We'll try to address as much as we can from the topics that come up, uh, both from the chat in real time and also pre-submitted questions. We do ask everybody as a favor, please do keep your mic muted. Uh, voice is obviously on, and we do expect we'll be taking questions from the audience in real time as well at designated times. So please keep it muted in the meantime. So earlier in this week, we did invite the community to submit their questions in advance. So we're going to start today with some of the pre-submitted questions. And uh, again, we'll also try to address some of the ones that come in in chat as well. So this is a roundtable format. We're here not just to respond, but to also listen and take in your real-time feedback in ways that we can improve and learn from your experiences in Second Life. Support questions should be directed to our support portal. We'll put that link in chat shortly. Uh, there's also a feedback portal. We'll provide that link as well. And uh, we also want to remind people, lastly, that there is a recurring or there are recurring user group meetups and world. And there's a wiki page that we'll share shortly where we direct you to if you want to meet with small intimate meetings with uh, some of the Lindens on each respective team. So again, one more reminder, please mute your mic. And now let's get started. Let's give a big virtual welcome to Second Life founder and now CTO. Philip Rosedale. Thank you, Brett. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> this, 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 the text is scrolling by quite quickly. Thank you very much for having me. I'm going to risk the render gods and respectfully turn as I say hello to everyone, <laughs> though I may not bow. I want to see all your faces, and it's great to see everyone. I am in full transparency on, let's see, a MacBook Pro at about 15 frames per second right now as I turn in circles. Nice to hear, nice to see everyone. As Brett said, we're going to do this as best we can uh, in this Four Corners uh, open community format. I'm going to answer some of the questions that you submitted. There were about 100, and I'm going to answer. Uh, I think 20 or so of them uh, quickly, and then we'll shift over to conversation with everyone here. As Brett said, he's monitoring the chat. I'm going to do my best to read the chat while I'm speaking, although I will, you know, not see all of it. And then we'll take some uh, discussion at the end. Um, well, at, as at, at the high level, uh, as Brett said, I am back full time at the lab as our CTO. Um, and also as a board member. I couldn't be having more fun. There's obviously a lot of work to do, and I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm a little tired. It's been uh, really uh, since about the beginning of October that I've been heads down full time, uh, coming back and uh, uh, trying to do a lot of new and exciting things. Um, We've had a few years of fantastic work done by Brad uh, coming in with the acquisition of Linden and making the company uh, and the product better in a lot of different ways. We're much more efficient in how we're doing things. We uh, uh, have improved things like our ability to support people, uh, lots and lots of, of, of different things about the, the company. And most importantly, we're very successful as a business um, again meaning that we've got uh, extra money to hire new people we've got the ability to pursue new projects and combined with the fact that technology is changing in such interesting ways right now i was really excited when uh, brad and i started talking about the opportunity to bring me back uh, full time uh, for those who may know me from some of my other work, we have had a lab here in San Francisco for the last couple of years, and that lab has spawned uh, a few companies out of it. We've, the, the lab's actually gone on as kind of a sub-project here, um, 
in the building at least where where Second Life is headquartered. And so some of the ideas we have around uh, new work in AI uh, is work that's already gone on, some of it uh, here uh, in our lab over the last couple of years. Um, I'll touch on some of that later in answer to some of the questions, but I am delighted to be back. I think I really appreciate, I got a lot of warm messages so far as you could imagine. I really appreciate them. Thank you to everybody who sent me uh, welcome back messages on different channels. I really appreciate it. Um, and I think, as Brett mentioned with this series, but more, more broadly, I hope this is the beginning of a deeper conversation with everyone, including everyone here, but also everyone in Second Life. I want to uh, really learn from everyone, you know, before uh, we, we make big decisions about what we're doing. You may have seen me trying out different social media and other channels, uh, things like Reddit, Discord, I got a Prim Feed account, uh, and others. Um, if there's a channel that you think I should be in, uh, please let me know. Um, you can also always send me comments uh, at lindenlab.com. Philip at lindenlab.com is a way to reach me via email, and then I will be in and out of these other channels and trying to learn more uh, from you in them and also just figure out better ways to interact with everyone to kind of self-govern second life and you know, you know kind of look at how look at where latest technology has left us being able to do that better um, I also created a new group that I'd love to have everybody join if you want to follow along in these experiments in deeper communication the group is called friends of Philip and you should be able to join it right now so it'd be fun if you do so um, and tell other people about it so friends of Philip is a group I partially got some inspiration from the great work that Firestorm's been doing with support um, using a large in-world group uh, so hats off to Firestorm in that regard and I thought that maybe I could try um, creating a large group and doing some communication in that context and more broadly, uh, as I say, just finding out how to talk to everybody. So with that, let me answer a few of the questions uh, uh, that were sent beforehand and then we'll, we'll take some more from everybody here. Um, and I'm not going to name the people, who, but if you're here and you've submitted that question, thank you very much and feel free to um, add to that as we get into the second part of the conversation. The first question, and I, I tried to pick out the questions, there were about 100 submitted that I thought kind of hit some of the big topics that matter right now. So the first question is, Second Life has been stagnant in terms of technology for a while, and PBR and GLTF is a big step forward, and that's good and exciting. However, there's a fraction of the community that doesn't realize that PCs need to be upgraded more often than once every decade. <laughs> Are there any plans to remind the less tech-savvy part of Second Life that this is the case? MMOs like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy raise their system requirements every few years as they keep releasing expansions. Second Life should do the same if we want to match graphical fidelity of competing platforms. So, people in Second Life so far, m many people have stayed more than 10 years here. Uh, and I want to thank all of them and the many people here that I'm sure are among that, that group. Um, we have people in Second Life who depend on it in the way that, you know, most people might depend on something like their basic internet service or their cell phone. So I think we have to be more careful than, for example, an MMOG developer might be. The typical time that people stay in games is much, much shorter than Second Life. The, the, the life cycle of the typical game is, is nothing like the, you know, 20 years that many people have, you know, uh, nearly uh, been here in Second Life, or I think actually some people like myself, literally. Um, so kicking out, you know, a big portion of your population when a new generation of PCs comes out seems both ethically fraught and just a much higher impact for us than for a more typical game. So for everything we've been doing, we're trying to take that into consideration. And for example, in these last few releases in particular, where we've been trying to recover from the problems that we introduced um, earlier this year in the, the release of the, uh, uh, you know, various viewers uh, around some new capabilities that culminated with Firestorm's uh, June 20th release that caused us a bunch of trouble, caused everyone a bunch of trouble that we're working on fixing right now. 
And in those last few releases, we've been doing everything we can actually to fix settings and find workarounds on older machines. So I think that while we certainly need to continue increasing the graphic fidelity of Second Life, we have to recognize who is here, who's using it, who we're of service to, and make sure that we don't cut off uh, big swaths of the population as we accidentally did a few months ago, and I'm very sorry for it. Um, next question. Second Life has an aging population. What are the plans to attract new residents to expand and liven up our communities? Platforms like VRChat are quite a lot more technically advanced than Second Life, which might be one of the great, one of the attractive points to younger generations. Puppetry, GLTF, Lua do seem like great tools to modernize Second Life. Is there anything else on the roadmap? So let me just say that the, I, I wonder who agrees with me here. The most mind blowing thing about VRChat is simply being able to see yourself embodied and moving as your avatar, to look in the mirror, as many people do in VR chat, at yourself wearing your avatar, right? I know this is an experience that will bring people to tears. I've seen it. You know, the challenge that, that we have in uh, creating that future for ourselves is that VR headsets are growing way too slowly. It's something that affected Second Life and affects us here now. I'd love to be able to find a way to use Second Life in VR, but I don't think we have anywhere near the resources to write a VR viewer from scratch. So while we're thinking about what we do with VR in the more distant future, we are not working on it uh, right now. Next question. Dear Philip Rosedale, welcome to the new position at Linden Lab. We all wish you good luck and are looking forward to seeing Second Life evolve and improve. My question is about the implementation of AI in Second Life, the new Welcome Hub Social Plaza has a bot named Janet the Welcome Greeter, but she didn't answer very questions very well, if at all. Would a chat GPT version of her not be easy to train based on existing FAQ help pages and be able to help <coughs> answering questions about Second Life for both newcomers and more experienced users? How do you see implementation of AI and Second Life in general? Thank you. So AI in general, let's talk about it. You have noticed us doing a number of what I would call alpha tests with bots, as, as the one discussed there, with uh, uh, greeters, with tr trying to get, figure out ways to get dressed. And, and in fact, one of our companies here in the office, Current, has worked on some really interesting uh, back-end deployments of technology that you may not have seen yet, like trying to do a better job triaging the reports that we get on Canny. Uh, that's an example of a pretty successful, I think, use of AI that can really materially help us. But the applications of AI in Second Life, we have to be very careful and thoughtful about, um, you know, despite how many exciting things are going on in the broader kind of AI world. So as you see us doing these tests with bots uh, of different kinds, understand that we're playing with things but not saying that this is the right direction yet. I don't think we know what the right direction is for AI in virtual worlds. And in particular, when we use AI as actual characters in the world, as you know, what we might call NPCs or, or bots or you know, uh, companions or you know, any other words like that you may hear us using, we're doing these experiments with a couple of big rules in mind. One of the most important ones I want to reiterate here and that I've said in other contexts outside of the Second Life work is that AI has got to be used as Second Life has been as a way of bringing us closer together rather than a way of providing substitutes for each other. So for example, an AI uh, that helps you find new friends in Second Life might be a great thing, but an AI that provides a replacement for a relationship with someone else seems almost certainly not the thing we want to be doing. So I think our focus needs to continue to be indefinitely on doing what we've already done a pretty good job at, uh, and a much better job than traditional social media, which is bringing people together, as we all know and have experienced. Next question. Given the massive success of platforms like Roblox, what are some of the ways Linden Lab is working to grow the user base amongst these types of users, and particularly younger people? So in general, we don't have and we don't want kids using Second Life. Let me just say that. We do allow 16-year-olds and up to use Second Life, but with restricted maturity settings on 16 to 18. And generally speaking, and to our knowledge, it seems like there are very few kids on the grid, and we like it that way. We're worried about risks of harm there uh, on multiple levels. Financial exploitation, for example, of kids. Um, adults just not wanting kids there. 
and adults potentially being of harm to kids. So there's a lot of reasons why we have to be very, very careful in that regard. And it's why, as yet, we have not made attempts to make Second Life more appealing uh, to younger people. We're very interested in your perspectives on that on an ongoing, and, and I'm sure you know that they're going to change as time goes by, but that's where we are right now. Uh, we're keeping it an experience for grown-ups. Next question. Welcome back. We missed you. Thank you. In terms of moving forward with AI and other shiny new things, what are your thoughts on the upgrade of the engine? We have been running the same engine uh, for most of Second Life's life uh, with PBR here. And now you want to bring AI and such. Are we not on borrowed time with the current engine? Well, a couple of thoughts about that. First of all, Second Life has a very complex user experience. Uh, indeed, people actually need to help each other use Second Life, and so they need to be using a common um, and very complex UI to do that. And of course, the, you know, the best and the most common UI for Second Life is Firestorm, actually. Uh, and thank you, Firestorm, for being that, being that, that home for people uh, as a user experience. Um, but we have to plan for, for that reason, because of the complexity of that user experience, I think we have to plan on providing that user experience for a long time, if not indefinitely, and probably on the same engine. So I think we cannot as easily as other systems just change the engine underneath a set of UI complexity that is so remarkable, to say the least. I know, I know you all know what I mean there. Um, but at the same time, you know, while, while, while planning to sustain this U, UX, I assume most people, folks here are using Firestorm, um, we are also evaluating whether we can or should build an entirely new viewer the same way we did with mobile that can make Second Life more accessible to people who either don't have the required PC or can't figure out the current uh, UI. Next question. Many people are now increasingly coming to the fight against their virtual addiction to Second Life. They increasingly begin to realize that they're losing touch with the first reality and spend too much time in Second Life. How severe can the consequences be in this regard in the future? Now that's a great question, right? Because we can clearly see that whether we're talking about social media or apps or games, there's tremendous danger of addiction. But most of the time, when we talk about addiction in software, we're talking about these exploitive, exploitative dopamine loops that basically keep you drawn into a mechanism, into a game mechanism or into a behavioral mechanism. Um, that's pretty different, though, than Second Life. In Second Life, I think the most addictive component is that you have friends there. I bet everybody here would agree with that. I, I, know, that, I know that I do. Um, and as we all know from being in Second Life, those friendships are as real and meaningful and as real life ones. Friends in Second Life are not like having followers on Twitter. They're quite close, as we all know, and in many ways can be better than having friends in the real world. So we have to consider that in many cases we're providing a, a genuine reduction in loneliness and access to friends. And that's, in my opinion at least, a very, very good thing for us to be doing in the world, to be doing right now, to be doing online in a way that almost nothing out there online has, has created, you know, like we have. So I think we have to be careful, but I do agree that we have to be very careful not to cause harm along a lot of lines, and that is a good example of one of the places we have to be thoughtful. Um, next question. How do you solve, quote, the boob problem? end quote. You can't look at one page of the marketplace or visit in-world shops without seeing thumbnails of women in a state of undress. It makes attracting new users and new partnerships problematic. It's not about being a prude. It's about going to the office and not seeing pinups in every other cubicle. I think that's a great, uh, yeah, maybe it's a little bit funny, but it's an important and meaningful question. You know, the, the, the one that really breaks my heart is when we teleport and we show up naked for a few seconds. It just seems like a ridiculously unexclusive thing for us to be doing. How many people find it fundamentally unacceptable to show up naked after teleporting somewhere? I say this because this was my fault in the beginning. It was something that I just kind of thought was funny when we were getting started. And frankly, looking back on that, I can't believe I did that. I should have been immediately like, that's a P1 bug. Nobody can show up naked, you know, and then have their clothes show up a few seconds later. 
So I think we have to take considers concerns like this very seriously, that in addition to teleporting and becoming naked, yeah, it's too easy for pretty much anyone to, to encounter content quickly in Second Life that might offend them. And fixing that, I agree, would make us more widely accessible. So we need to be thinking about how to do it and doing it. You shouldn't be exposed to content that deeply upsets you almost immediately on entering Second Life. And you should be able to come into Second Life from a wide variety of use cases and desired journeys and cultural backgrounds and everything. Um, so we really need to think about that. So I just wanted to restate it. But, but we have to reduce what people easily run into while balancing letting people do what they want in the privacy of their own homes, et cetera, as we all know. So the balance of striking the balance here is difficult, but I also think it's doable. And so I think we, you'll, you'll see us move forward um, in that regard over time. And I hope that in these uh, discussions we have uh, and figure out the ways to have better discussions with people about this, we get a lot of good feedback. Next, next question. As a creator, is there anything we creators could do to assist you guys with your goals or visions for Second Life? So yeah, there's a lot, and I think we need to do a better job, again, in beginning conversations like these and getting your feedback on things. More broadly, though, I would simply ask that we all help onboard people. Many, many of us are already doing that. Do you realize that if, if amongst the really devoted users of Second Life, we all brought a new user in and help them get started in Second Life uh, once every six months that Second Life would be growing again? That's kind of a crazy observation. So I think that we need to design, you need to, you need to help us and we need to design the right systems to best enable everyone to do that. You know, Second Life, at least at this moment, um, requires help to use, as we all know. Probably the most help with dressing your avatar, right? Um, but it requires one-on-one -on -one help and everybody that joins Second Life and makes it knows that there's somebody uh, that they that they really respect for having helped them get started you know other than just a good piece of software so help us think through that help us onboard more people help us bring more people in because ultimately for content creators right the, the only positive sum game is increasing the size of the economic the, the size of the overall economy we don't want to do a, a negative sum or a zero sum game where we're just shifting around you know revenues between people we want to create a positive sum game and that means bringing more people in and i deeply believe and I'll, I'll read a lovely uh, piece on this later, but I deeply believe that we have got more people that would like to use Second Life right now in its current form with the current community we have, with the people that are deeply devoted to being here. There are more of those people worldwide than we have actively using Second Life. It's not, you know, a half a million people or so that are uh, the sort of people who would love to be in Second Life. There's no way that's the only, you know, number of, of those people worldwide. Um, next question. Are there any plans to update Second Life scripting language from LSL to modern languages like C Sharp or Python, similar to what Sansar has done? Well, yes. <laughs> Just use this opportunity to repeat that we're working on Lua uh, slash Lua, which is also used by Roblox. Um, as a potential replacement um, to, or, or a, a, a potential addition, initially addition to the scripting engine capabilities so that content creation becomes more easy, easy in that new language. Um, so we'll see how that comes. Um, that one is not ready yet, but it is work that's underway. Next question. Why doesn't Linden Lab allow payments by Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies in Second Life? This would attract more investors. I, I think what this question means is, yeah, if you're purchasing Linden dollars or buying land, for example, why can't you do that with, uh, with, with crypto? Um, I do think it's a good point that as payment systems have matured, and not just crypto, but you know any number of new systems, you know things like Zelle or whatever, there's, there's a million different uh, innovative new ways to take payments for things. And I think that we should be actively we should grow by actively expanding all the ways in which people can pay us obviously with second life there are all the legal and regulatory complexities of doing that because we are uh you know allowing you to purchase linda dollars in some cases with those forms of currency but yes we should be expanding um uh 
paying for things with as many currencies as possible. And we do agree that crypto would be a good goal there. Although, as I think I've seen some people say, there are many negative things about crypto that I, I myself have written about lots and lots. If you care to read my stuff, you can find my Substack and Medium and things like that. Uh, you know, I, I think there are real dangers to, you, you know, going all in on cryptocurrency, but simply accepting cryptocurrencies as a mean of, means of payment uh, makes a ton of sense. Next question, why not use a communications budget with major YouTube influencers or others to promote Second Life, which is slowly fading away each day? Um, well, you're right. We need, we need to get Second Life growing. Um, it, it has uh, gotten a tiny bit smaller in terms of metrics like concurrency um, uh, over time, and we need to turn that around. As I said, again, if each of us were able to bring one person in every six months, we'd actually reverse that trend. So it shows how uh, gentle the decline is and how quickly we could uh, we could do that. Um, and we are going to start marketing for growth again and soon. So that's exciting. Um, the, the company is you know, very well equipped to begin marketing again. We think there's lots of ways we can do that. But marketing for directly into channels like, say, YouTube, just broadly, where there's a ton of uh, just there's just a really kind of random set of people listening to the messaging isn't effective with Second Life because 95% or so of, of, of randomly chosen people still don't want to use virtual worlds like this. Uh, they don't, th that is to say, they don't want to become avatars and go into a virtual world. Um, uh, as I've talked about before, and I'm wrapping together two question responses here, one of the reasons for that is simply that um, without facial expressions and body language, when you walk up to another avatar, there's still a kind of unusual experience to Second Life. I was thinking about it and thinking that I would describe it like it's like going to a bar or a restaurant where there's all kinds of strangers you didn't know and doing the whole experience completely in the dark, you know, shutting the lights off in the bar, if you will, and then talking to everybody with your voice, but not your body language. And as you can imagine, especially with new people, that's a pretty difficult uh, that's a pretty uncomfortable thing for most people. And so for that reason, we can't yet, until we get that kind of nonverbal communication working better, I think, we can't just offer Second Life to everybody. That's what I thought in 2006, you know, when I was the enthusiastic and excited and quite a bit younger founder of this company. We wanted to make it work for everybody. And I think the reason it doesn't yet work for everybody is largely because of that sense of uh, that, that lack of nonverbal communication. So we can't yet just, you know, hand out flyers for Second Life on the street corner in New York, but we can do lots of marketing and we're going to think about how to do it. And if you have specific marketing ideas to more narrowly target the people who today would want to be using Second Life, please email them to me, send them to me. We are going to start marketing again and it, it should be fun. Um, Next one, we saw the post about suspension of Skrill uh, as a credit service. Um, many of us had, ha, has, have Skrill as the only option to process credit, so will there be any new alternative? Um, we are we're all we're hands on on this problem. We're well aware of it, and we're not going to shut that service down until we've identified other options for you. So thanks for bringing that one up. Um, we, we we need to make sure there's there's adequate um, cash out options for everybody, and we won't shut scroll down until we've identified and described what the uh, what other options are. Next question: What's the future for the mainland? Will you finish off the two incomplete continents? I wanted to take that question just to say how much I love the mainland and how much, in general, I think there's a magic property of Second Life, which is that people are able to work together. I don't just see this in the mainland, by the way. I see it in many of the islands now, which are very large groups of islands in which there are wonderful communities that are together on those islands. So being uh, 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 being able to uh, build together with a community of other people where you work out, you know, what your collective lives are together, I think is one of the really magical things about Second Life that no one else has captured yet. We're not, uh, it, it hasn't happened. Uh, it, it, the, the, there's just not yet, other than Second Life, uh, demonstrations of that kind of deep collective behavior in virtual worlds. And so I really have a big belief in this. And that, that also is one of these, you know, obviously, do we prioritize things like region crossing and different forms of community governance, right? I think we should. Um, I know region crossing is a specific hotspot that people have mentioned in many of our recent surveys. Yes, we've got to keep making that better. Um, that was always the idea. I see people mentioning houseboats and sailing and boats. Absolutely, we've got to make that work. 
Uh, and again, uh, I think with respect to some of that governance and community building stuff, please join my new group, Friends of Philip, and we'll we'll talk together about that in more detail there. Um, how long before the mobile app becomes the only app? That was the question. I think never. Many people here are going to want to use Second Life on desktop forever, and that seems great. Indeed, I think the most deep and immersive uses of Second Life probably can't be translated completely to the mobile device. But at some point, our hope is that a new person could access Second Life entirely from mobile, but we don't think we're there yet. So right now what we're trying to do with the mobile version is get to something where it's at least a little helpful to everyone to use the mobile version. And maybe a fun way to get started even, but that's kind of the order we're doing it. A little bit of utility for everybody first, then maybe a way for newer people to get started or do part of the experience, but then ultimately have desktop always available. As someone just said, tiny screens don't work. Yeah, the way I say it is, it's like the black mirror, right? Like having Second Life as an experience on the black mirror, um, that's very hard. <laughs> so we need, to, we need to take that. That said, I think that by doing a good job getting a mobile app that is out there in concert with desktop will, will allow us to grow. So this next one is, uh, is, is moving, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to read it without having it make me cry, because I thought it was so, it was so wonderful. Um, and I think it, it speaks to a lot, so let me just read it. Uh, I started in Second Life in 2009 because a friend I knew in an online writer's group had suffered a serious injury that put him in a coma. And when he woke up, he was confined to a wheelchair. He went from being an active athletic person in real life to feeling like he was forced to watch the world go by through a window, wrestling with real depression. Another friend in the same group had been part of Second Life for several years already and suggested he come into SL as he might find meaningful things to do there. They asked me to join because I have a gift for understanding technology and being able to explain how things work to people who are less tech savvy. I threw myself into learning everything I could about how Second Life worked so I could be up to speed and answer his questions as he went along. He dove into several communities, one after another. I went along with him, learning as fast as I could. One of the things that started to become apparent to me is that many of the most dedicated and brilliant creators in Second Life were seniors or disabled in real life. Around 2012, one of the CEOs, I think this means after me, uh, commissioned a study to find out more about the people who joined Second Life. I don't know where that study is now, but what I remembered was that the, the study revealed something like 19 out of 20 people who joined Second Life left within a year. We touched on this earlier, by the way. The Linden Lab leadership wanted to figure out how to make more people stay. The question I thought was being overlooked was, quote, who's the one who, person who stays in that 20, end quote. I love that. My own answer that I found out was that people who stayed were highly motivated to figure it out. Second Life at that time was not necessarily plug and play user friendly, but these people threw themselves into the world with tenacity. When I learned about who these people were in real life, they were again elderly, autistic, or physically handicapped in real life. In the real world, these people were put on the shelf, treated as if their lives were waning. In Second Life, they came back to themselves, much like music revives the catatonic mind. All this is to say, I think a big mistake the lab has made over the years is to treat Second Life as if it were a, a game and, and cater as a diversion for the young, when it really, really, really has a meaningful place for people who the real world tends to put on the shelf. This is too long. I've been carrying this for many years, but I really hope, uh, and I may not be the person to implement it, but I hope someone does. Thank you. I'm glad you're back. More than anything to that, I just say, yes, truth. It feels like uh, we need to understand better and better and better uh, who the people here are and, and who we're serving and make changes to Second Life, for example, to its accessibility, which I think uh, is, a, a, is a huge opportunity for us. You know, we, sh we should make Second Life accessible to all of those people who are using it. Um, and, uh, you know, for example, I think that means things like uh, captions and translation and sound and uh, text changes so that people that are, for example, hearing impaired or, or visually impaired um, uh, can, can use it, you know, transparently, basically. Uh, so I just wanted to read that one because I thought it really captured what I was trying to say earlier, which is secondly, it's not for everybody, but it's 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 amazing. And we just need to be thoughtful about that as we begin our marketing and understand what we're doing. 
Um, let's see. Another one, a last, a last one here, and then we'll take some uh, from everyone else. Uh, the question is, I hope Second Life can give the opportunity for banned accounts to be revived and given life again. The user was previously wronged uh, uh, of wrongdoing despite proving otherwise, but was consequently banned. Is there a chance uh, that these banned accounts can be given reconsideration? Um, my answer to that is simply to reflect on together how amazing Second Life is. You know, banning from an online community uh, is a kind of last resort and, you know, obviously should only happen in under the most desperate conditions where there's just no way to have, uh, you know, someone uh, participating in the community anymore. And again, I think over the years we've done a pretty good job of, of, of handling that process as best we can. But the very fact that it comes up over and over again, in one sense, reiterates the importance of virtual worlds and again why we're doing this in that text I just read and I think in that spirit we can certainly continue to recognize our uh, the, the importance of Second Life to individuals the import the, the seriousness of banning and whether there are processes uh, you know judicial processes if you will that can make that work better or you know provide alternatives in some cases to banning so I just wanted to kind of state that question not because I have a quick answer. I don't, and I think we're largely doing the best that we can right now. But to say that uh, Second Life is a precious thing, and we've got to focus on those people who hold it as precious and live here and continue to design it to support their needs, even the needs of governance where appropriate. You know, when, so when someone has to leave Second Life, they should have to leave in broad agreement, you know, with the community that they had to leave. And so I think we can continue to do things to uh, do better in that regard. But I do see many notes like that, and so I just wanted to read that one. So thanks. That wasn't all the questions. And uh, let's shift now maybe to some conversation. Uh, again, I, I hope that Again, I'm back. <laughs> I, I hope that this can be the beginning of a variety of conversations in different formats. You know, this is one with a large number of people, so it's largely, I guess you call it didactic. You know, I'm standing up here uh, just talking at everybody, and uh, we need to do other uh, engagements with the community that have uh, different experimental characters to them. And, and I intend to do that. And for those who know me, you probably know that I have a lot of fun experimenting with different uh, processes for communication. So, Brett, why don't I uh, turn it back to you and, and maybe ask you to lead us in some uh, interaction here. Great. Thank you, Philip. So what I'm going to start with, I've been monitoring the text chat and I will uh, repeat the question. And if that person here wants to elaborate on voice, they're welcome to do so or text, but I'll go ahead and start. And again, hopefully I'll get uh, as many of these as we can. Uh, so, uh, one resident asks, Philip has land in Waterhead. Will you take it back and fix it and the old Linden Lab headquarters? Oh, wow. Well, that's a good one. You threw, you, you got a good surprise for me there, Brett. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I will, I will take this as an incentive to go and explore uh, my land in Waterhead, but obviously that's one of the old servers. I guess I would take this time to say I often hang out in uh, Ahern where the, uh, I, I believe that's where the little uh, man statue in the ivory tower of primitives and uh, many of the, well, whenever I go there, I run into uh, some of the oldest residents of Second Life. And so it's always a, always a pleasure to do that. But yes, I will, uh, I'll take that as a, a, a good question to figure out what to do if we, if we should be uh, bringing land back, as you say, and, and I love the mainland, like I said before. Okay, we've got another question, actually similar to that, I guess. How important is digital history, like the area around the old Linden Lab headquarters? Again, I think this is the same person, uh, Philip, uh, part two. Uh, shall it be left broken, uh, or is it a good idea to tr restore old region and, and builds? Clearly some interest in the digital origins and history of Second Life. Yeah, well, when we started, of course, for those who remember, you know, especially back in like 2006, like we literally had an amount of data on the, the main grid that was kind of inconceivable. I mean, we at that time were one of the largest, you know, exchanges of data traveling across the Internet and 
also just storage devices to store everything, which, which I'm saying because one of the problems of what, what you'd ideally like would be like the Wayback Machine for Second Life, right? Where you could just go to any region, stand there, and then like, like turn back the clock or make a local copy of it or something to play in that represents it from a different point in time. But the one problem there, and I guess I can say this as our CTO more, uh, more effectively than I suppose I you could have said it as our founder. Uh, you know, there's some there's some considerable expense in maintaining a complete uh, time history of the world. But I agree with the questioner. I think that we it'd be nice if we could come up with uh, better collective mechanisms for celebrating, uh, say, old builds. I, I think that gets to governance. By the way, I, I've been thinking a lot about that. And for those who know my work with. Uh, fair share, which is a exploratory digital currency that involves a lot of community building and community structure. I think there might be ways for us to do a better job of like uh, voting on or otherwise using our community to actively decide like what things should be preserved. Because I know that if I asked, you know, everybody here what they thought was the most important, uh, you know, build in the world to be, say, say, preserved if the folks who build it weren't able to pay for it anymore. I just think we'd have such a wide variety of answers that, you know, even if we had a, uh, a gathering like this to say, you know, what stuff should we lock in place or bring back or whatever, uh, I think it would probably be very fractious, you know, at, at present. We just have a lot, of, a lot of us shouting at each other about, you know, how to do that in a limited way. I, I'm seeing. I'm just going to respond to one question. When you bring the birds and the ators back, I just love that. I I wrote the original birds and ators for those who have seen the Linden Lab, the Welcome to Linden Lab video from uh, James Linden of uh, I think about 2005. Uh, there was an ecosystem in Second Life at the very beginning that was really related to what my personal. Uh, interest in virtual worlds was, which was kind of simulation, cellular automata, artificial life. Um, I don't, I, I guess I would, I wanted to repeat that one because I think it's important to recognize that, you know, what I think is cool about Second Life isn't what we should build next. We, we, we should build what we all think is cool. And so, you know, if we, if we find out that through innovations like Lua, for example, we can do a better job of simulating artificial life or, or, you know, improving different aspects of Second Life. Uh, I think we should do it if it makes sense to everybody. But I personally, I, I must say, am a huge artificial life fan. And I also think, by the way, that AI is going to get really unusual when you have actual living things moving around in an environment. One of the projects here at our lab that I have helped on um, is a project, or actually a couple of different projects that are very expansive projects related to different kinds of AI systems with the goal of creating conscious living things rather than text prediction machines, which is what, as you many of you probably know, we kind of have today with LLMs. So next question, Brett. Okay, uh, there was a, just a follow-up question. I think you really answered it already about Skrill. Maybe just elaborate about Skrill and the replacement. Um, just clarify that perhaps. Just uh, we recognize because we've gotten a lot of good feedback that Skrill is a is a uh, is the only cash out mechanism for a number of people, and so we are going to look very hard at all those uh, accounts and try to establish whether there are alternative uh, cash out mechanisms wherever possible before we do anything with uh, with with uh, Skrill. So yeah, thanks for the concerns on there, and we will we will try to provide an alternative. Um, uh, to, to everybody that's using it. Uh, the next question is an interesting one. Can we get uh, Second Life unbanned from Twitch? So unbanning from Twitch, right. Um, we've, we've explored that a number of times in the past. As folks know, Twitch has a, a, a pretty high sensitivity um, around adult themed content. And that I think has been what has driven the uh, uh, inability of people to broadcast on Twitch. Uh, and I do think we should continue to make the argument and, and will uh, with Twitch that we, we should be allowed on there. And potentially, even as we touched on earlier, maybe just to make changes to the uh, accessibility of, say, you know, much more adult themed content in, in, in a way that maybe, you know, works for lots of people here and also works for Twitch. Uh, you know, we sort of touched on that earlier. And so I think we might be able to kind of do that work together. But yeah, uh, uh, 
I, I think that we, it would be great, I know, to be able to broadcast onto Twitch. The other marketing concern I have, as I touched on earlier, and you know, we'll just keep reiterating is, I don't think that Second Life's necessarily for everybody, so we have to be thoughtful about that. And in some cases, also touching on what I said earlier, we don't want to do something that would like just bring in teenagers um, as well. So, so we have to be careful there too. Um, although I must say off the top of my head, I'm not, uh, I don't have an instant reckoning on, you know, to what extent, to, to what the uh, ages are of people that are using Twitch. Go ahead. I have a question about your thoughts sure. about educators sure. in Second Life and maybe the future of Second Life supporting educators. Well, I continue to believe that it's funny. Um, when we ran into trouble with VR adoption at High Fidelity, um, as, as many folks here probably know, we did or were following along. Uh, one of the, when I sat down and I thought about, uh, well, if you really did need to make VR work for some application for which it really can be used broadly, um, you know, not just things like industrial training, right, where there is some success with VR headsets, I always go back to education as the sensible uh, way that virtual worlds and VR devices can have a positive impact on everyone worldwide. You know, if you could, if you could be educated in a virtual world capably, it potentially reduces the costs and greatly expands the accessibility of good education to all. So let me just say that I really believe in education and always have as a use case. Um, I think that we have to be thoughtful about things like VR devices and communication modality and nonverbal communication and things like that in doing that. I also know, and I see some folks mentioning it here, uh, th thank you Zinnia, Second Life's Transformational for my college students, um, I'm glad that it is. There are certainly uh, specific educational areas in which Second Life is and always has been very effective, so I hope we can um, for example, by making changes where, you know, you're less likely as a teacher, say, to run into uh, content that upsets you, uh, we, we should be able to continue making it more accessible to, to, to more people. And just generally that theme of accessibility. I think that, it, I think that Second Life through performance improvements, through specific feature changes can be made more accessible to the people who are presently using it. So I hope we can do that. Next one, Brett. <laughs> Cody, it's wonderful to hear your voice, Cody. I'm sorry that I can't understand it a little better. If you could type in the chat too, that'd be that'd be awesome. But it's so great to see you there. Thank you. Cody, Cody we're gonna, um, if you can, if we can get your question, we'll. Go <laughs> nice to see you. Great. Okay, so we have another question, um, and Cody, we will get yours as well, uh, rest assured. Um, there's a question about puppetry, um, which I one point was in development. I'm not myself clear on its status. I think they're asking, one, to put it on your radar and perhaps have us take a look at it again. Yeah, so certainly I did follow the puppetry project and in fact had some had made some contributions to it because as we touched on earlier, I'm very strongly of the opinion that increases in communication bandwidth between people is just generally important in Second Life. In fact, let me say, I think that we've biased ourselves perhaps a bit more toward content creation options and not enough toward communication improvements. I think one thing I could imagine being a, an improvement if, is if we shift resources around so that we're more steadily making uh, advances across, for example, accessibility, communication, discovery, search, in concert with the advances that we're making to seeing things like fundamental engine capability and creative creation tools. So I think we need to be doing all of that. Yeah, the expression social tooling that I just saw coffee write is, is, is I think, an apt description of this. Um, so uh, uh, I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's a good way of doing that, specifically with respect to puppeteering. Um, yeah, moving the avatar's body more capably has got to be in some way, one way or another on the roadmap. You know, right now we're still almost always just triggering and playing back animations, although I must say my, my avatar is wiggling around while I'm talking is a, is a kind of an in-betweener example of something that moves a little bit more toward the puppeteering direction. But basically, I think we need to come up with ways to move avatars 
in a more sophisticated fashion. And of course, were we ever to do anything in VR, we would, of course, that would be a hard requirement because, as I said earlier, the appeal of VR is seeing yourself moving, you know, on screen for the first time in your own avatar's body. Um, so puppeteering is a big piece of that. That said, we're not working on it right now. And I think it's one of those things where if you underinvest in it, if you only have like one person work on it on the weekends, you're just not going to get to anything that's useful to everybody here. And I think that's been one of the challenges with puppeteering for those folks here that work on things like inverse kinematics and, uh, you know, blending and, you know, all the, all the crazy things that go along with animations uh, and joint movements. It's a tough space. So I, I think, yes, we need to figure out how to do things like puppetry better, but we need to figure out how to redeploy our resources in a way that allows us to do it well. And I think that applies more generally to a lot of things here. There's so many things in Second Life that are fantastic and kind of 80% built, and I'd like to get them to 100%. One of the ways that I'm different now coming back in terms of how I'm working with the team and what my strategic approach is, along with reflecting on who we're really serving and not trying to serve people that we're not you know, helping uh, is to be more, much more hardcore, a little more steep jobs, if you will, about not letting us put something out until it's ready, uh, you know, until we've talked to people about it, until it works really well. Uh, you know, there's just so many cases where we've done amazing work, you know, like, or like, like PBR materials even, where we've done amazing work, but we, we, you know, test it, deploy it, staff it in a way that's insufficient for what we're trying to achieve. And so, you know, I'm sorry that we've done that. And one of my intentions is to is to provide assistance at the top with just being more hardcore about, you know, fixing the broken windows and really completing things before we launch them. Brett? Okay. Um, we have another question. Uh, this is going way back. Uh, so somebody is asking if you remember the Second Life community conventions, the physical events that were held, uh, sort of fandom and meetups and so forth. Um, it's been, I think, over a decade or so since the last one. Just actually, I think they just want to get it on your radar saying, hey, we'd love to bring it back. I'd love to know how many people are interested in doing that again, maybe in the course of uh... Maybe in the course of figuring out how in this group, friends of Philip, again, please join. Let's see how many people I can, let's see how large a group I can make. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe in that group, we could have a little deeper conversation about what a, what, what a convention, what, what sort of convention or gathering everybody would like. So uh, I'll, I'll take it, uh, I'll take it under work or Brett and I will to take a look at that idea and, and think about it again. A mobile question for you, although I don't know if we can say publicly, I guess let's see what you say to this, but uh, they're asking, when will you open the mobile beta to non-premium or non-paid members? Um, very soon, um, with, I think within the next, uh, let, let's say within the next month, hopefully closer than that if we can. So yeah, we, we, we believe it's, it's, we think it's time now to get it, um, to get it out to everybody so that we can all try using it, as I said earlier, at least a little. Um, I don't want you to switch your second life use entirely over to mobile. Um, please don't do that. I don't, we're, I don't think we're ready for that yet. But I think that we have something where you could do things like uh, visit a place you've never seen before or exchange messages with people um, in a way that, that, that works pretty well. So we'll, 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 hope, we'll hopefully get that out um, uh, pretty soon. Thank you. We have a comment and a question. Uh, somebody says, when I speak with real life friends and family about working in Second Life, there is always a shade of bad reputation for our metaverse. And I'm sad about that because it causes uh, that people don't understand, you know, the potential for the, what we have here, uh, that Second Life allows your creativity to fly and you can be and do anything and everything. And this is special. So then the question here is, is there a plan perhaps to clean the name of this amazing platform that allows others to come here and enjoy it? I think that's a great question. I don't know if the person is here and could turn on their audio. I'm not quite sure what you mean by clean the name. Um, or change the name. I, I think one thing is, yes, we could change it back to Linden World. Uh, I think that one of the tricks, I, let, let me just riff a little bit if the person's here and wants to add something to that, uh, Brett, that'd be great. But I can riff on that a little bit and just say that uh, Second Life is so critically dependent on what I sort of call the double exponential 
of friends and content. You know that as we as we get together with new friends here, we're inspired to build more content, which then brings us more new friends. And so there's this incredible double exponential. Obviously, we all really saw it in 2006 when we just grew like an absolute rocket. By the way, in terms of just being, you know, uh, you know, proud of things, if you if you look up Google Trends, that old trend service, and you look up Second Life in there, just just witness and despair, ye competitors to us. <laughs> The, uh, the the vast success of Second Life as measured by uh, the use of it as a, as a term back in the back in 2006 or so it was, it was, it was quite something but I think that we um, I think that a lot of the appeal of Second Life depends on the fact that there are other people there and the fact that we're all kind of together in one place and so like simple things like you know rename it or you know start over again with an empty grid or whatever it's just not clear that the magic of Second Life is in its community and in the people that are already here um, being able to bring more people in but yeah like I think these are all good things to think about um, as we try to better figure out who's here and how can we serve them better um, yeah I see a lot of chat there, but I'll just, I'll stop there. Okay, the next question, um, I'm going to kind of paraphrase from it, but they reference, I think they, they may have seen you in the media somewhere in your journey when you were outside of Second Life after founding it and leaving it, yeah. um, that you may have made some reflective comments about it, pro and con, maybe as you were sort of reflecting and processing, you know, what Second Life meant to you as a founder. So I think the question, really the heart of it is, what is... Uh, how are you feeling about Second Life as you come back in? Do you, and will you really be immersed to understand the communities and what they do and what's important to them and what needs to be added and changed to make the Second World, Second Life world even better? Well, I mean, one thing to just restate the obvious, um, for those who know me or remember me back when I was uh, CEO um, in those first 10 years, I am, I am working at that level now again. So I am like working on Second Life all the time. Again, if you see me in different forums uh chat with me there too uh, or, or tell me where you want me to go that i'm that i haven't been and I'll, I'll go if i can um so i'm really really deeply involved in this as i said at the beginning part of that is figuring out how better to communicate with everyone and understand what we really need to do as the ceo i'm focusing on uh how and why uh, and which uh, you know technology changes we should make and i'm also focused on more broadly you know strategy and product um as i work with the executives here um i think that uh i i, I actually let let me go back and because that because it's kind of related the the person who uh eva i think who actually made that last question added something and said that yes. yeah it was oh hi Hi. <laughs> Shoot. Please go go ahead. No, I meant like uh, first. I am very sorry for my English. I'm Italian, so I'm very bad. Uh, you sound like, great. <laughs> thank you. But like uh, many many people, uh, when when I say I work in in Second Life, uh, say like, uh, oh, it's still alive that, but. Uh, that right. was only for sex stuff or other things so you know what i mean so yes. i would like to see uh, a new way of marketing and to show people uh, what we do here because it's amazing like it's the best metaverse uh, in the world so i Thank am very you. sad uh, uh, for for, for this because uh, people don't don't know how amazing the avatars uh, the scenes are here so thank you thank you, <laughs> thank you. those are so many good thoughts thank you and your vo your voice sounds wonderful your english is great um it does excite me because it makes me think about how one of the cool ai things we could do is translate for everybody that, that wants it you know kind of let everybody speak in a native language if they care to um, that's one of the features that you just made me think about there that I'm really excited about. Like, I'd like to have you teach me Italian by speaking to me in Italian, but I see your captions in English. Like, how cool would that be? Um, that's a specific thing that I think would be really fun. But, um, yeah, when people are like, is Second Life still around? Well, one thing about that is lately, 
people haven't been saying that as much. Like when I run into people, they're like, wow, Second Life. Yeah, I've heard about that. So they're, they, they're, their attitude has shifted a little bit from like, isn't that place gone or something to like, what's the deal with that place? <laughs> and I think that uh, because it's been around for so long now, you know, it's just kind of outlived it's a it's it's outlived its critics in some ways right like like people are always like well didn't second life go away and it's like no actually totally not um so so i think there is a sea change happening we are going to market more as i said earlier so let's do it i mean we're going to start growing again and we need everybody's help but of course you know we'll 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 fund that process and you know provide a bunch of energy um, for it but you know we're going to need your help with that as well but we are going to start growing again um i also think as i said in some of the communications about this we're at a very exciting moment in the world i mean the world is really exciting and really screwed up in a lot of big ways um you know there's tremendous uncertainty around whether we've broken ourselves with the internet for example you know have we ended democracy with the internet good god you know i mean it it seems like maybe <laughs> it seems maybe um some of the ways we've used technology broadly have put the very basic democratic process of working together as human beings uh in question and i find that terrifying um, as an entrepreneur who perhaps has had some role in it. Um, happily, I think that our role in technology and uh, the demonstration, or specifically what we've done with Second Life, has shown that there is a positive way, there's a much more positive way to connect with people. You know, Sec Second Life is an online venue, as we all know, where depolarization happens where people tend to become friends with people they, they might not have liked in the real world for example there's all these wonderful positive aspects of second life that we need to focus on more right we need to get we need to get that perception out in front of you know it's a you know a, a sex game or something like that but i think that we really do have an opportunity at this moment in history to demonstrate um mechanisms for getting along together in virtual worlds and to actually provide a better home for those who wish to use virtual worlds or need to in the coming years uh, than anybody else that's out there. So I really am excited at this moment and I think that virtual worlds are going to be respected uh, maybe again in a way that is super helpful to some of the broader challenges we face as a human society. So thank you for that question. Brett, I know we're probably running out of time. I'm uh, going to hang around for a bit um, if folks want to chat a little more, but I know we're going to, uh, we should call uh, an end to the official gathering. And I want to say thank you everyone so much for having me. And it's so good to be back and I'm having so much fun. And I hope that I see you in world or in one of these variety of uh, channels that we can talk to each other on. Thank you, Philip. And we are capturing the questions. And remember, we will likely have follow up community roundtables very soon. So if we didn't get your question answered, hang around with Philip and or uh, we'll bring it up and come back for the next one. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. This is great. Can I push in now? Sure. Yeah, let's do some. Hi, hi, Philip. Long time use. Um, <laughs> um, I just wanted yes. to say about the uh, the advertising promotion, and it really is the real. The, uh, it is a lot of negative that's always put out there instead of the positive, too, such as Relay for Life and. and and like that, but also um, what I noticed a lot, especially with presentation of uh, the mobile app, is that the Lindens, no offense, tend to advertise to people that are already here. We're already mm -hmm. here. We're already captive audience, but right. everything addressed to us instead of addressed to the world and having the world go, well, that looks interesting. Maybe I should join. Yep. Um, and, and I feel like that's everything's internalized, um, even posts on Flickr, posts on uh, 
the Twitter, things like that. It's always to us instead of to the world. And we're already here and we already love you. So, you know, <laughs> we, already, we already have our dollars and our support. Um, the other thing, though, too, is uh, when people do join, um, sorry, I'm going to take a minute. <laughs> um, the username experience is horrible at the moment. There is no explanation whatsoever of what a username is. Please right. go and check out the website because you join, and I'm a mentor at the Hub, so you have people coming in that either have down their personal name and then mm -hmm. freak out, or they put down stuff that you can't address them as yeah. and they freak out. Or their their names are just rubbish, and I understand that you can pay for a name now. But my partner actually says that you just monetized regret. So oh, no, and and it's harsh. It really is. That's really harsh. But that's the truth because you've got these people that come in and don't realize how absolutely mm -hmm. important. You so, so um. let me let me just sum that one up for you because that's great. So you're saying because I think I, I think I can take that and run with it. You're saying that the way we're presenting the account name and display name and last name and stuff is just not explaining it to people, and then they're feeling like they need to get another account or change their name and pay for that or something like that. That right. that is a sp so, specific one. Thank you. I can I can I can take that and run with it. Um, yeah, the join the join thing just says username, password, security question. It doesn't say what's going to happen when you're in world. Okay. And as you know, with other games, a lot of the time the username is just the back end behind the yep. scenes name. And when you yep. get in world, you actually name yourself. But that's not how SL is. So they're not realizing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I hope some of the, yeah. there's, there's also some Firestorm here, uh, folks here, I'm sure, who are. Um, in control of the slight differences in the join process with respect to Firestorm. So yeah, we should, we should, I think we should think about that on both sides. And I think having gone through the join process a couple of times myself in the past couple of weeks, I, I agree with you. I, I think I understand what you mean because I had the same inkling myself when I used right. it. Because we were all lucky, anything. right? We were all lucky. We got told there's a last name, yeah. but we got to choose a first name that would go with the last name. You know, we yeah. understood it was a name. So. The, um, I mean, I've seen some names that are, that are. I mean, I, I've told Brett this before. I had somebody come in that's that's name was husband abuser, you know, because they've just put down something. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, and that's just, yeah. they could go on to be incredible people in this community, but they're stuck with this name. And yep. once they start spending the dollars, that's the problem. Yep. And. So, you know, on their, on their look or whatever like that. And so, you know, then that could be why the retention's not staying. You know, why they're not, because they don't know yep. to just go out the door and create another account or maybe yep. get a support ticket and talk to somebody about it. I think you, I think you got me. I'm, don't, don't sell past the close. I'm on it. I'll, I'll see if, I'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you That's, so much. I, I agree. Who else wants to talk? Hi, Philip. I just want to say a thank you for hey. giving us Second Life. Big fan. Oh, thank you very much. And hi, Cody. Yeah. I, did you say you want to you want to give me a hug? <laughs> oh, thank you, Cody. Well, it's good to be back. I appreciate you. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. It's been fun, although I'm tired. You know what? I'm not sleeping very well, but I think that's just the first few weeks. Well, it's just so much to read and listen to, and uh, obviously some of it's a little stressful, but uh, I'm I'm really having fun being back, and I feel like it's my it's my home. So thank you, Cody. It's good to it's good to hear. From you. I'll come and visit. I'll come and visit. Send me your send me your send me your island in chat, Cody, and I'll remember to come by and say hi. I'll see you there. Yeah. 
I'll see you there. Right. So who else? Who else has got a, a voice comment? Hello. Hi. Uh, do you guys have any plans to set up more community gateways across across SL? Do you all have any more plans of that? Do you mean similar to the Linden Homes regions? No, I mean like with like um, different like um, like Premier Wrestling and like different community things like Premier Wrestling and places like that. Community Send me gateways and stuff like that. I, I think that we do. Oh, I, I, I see Patch actually saying we do. <laughs> um, if you, we have applications coming too. frequently for them. In fact, we've got someone under review now. I don't remember which one it was, but you can apply to beat one at any time. Okay. There we go. Bobby, is it going to be like quickly or? The review How process the process itself takes, takes, <laughs> the review process itself we're, takes we're several weeks. We're under investigation weeks, but, for it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. With the well, application, that's place. why she's asking. <laughs> okay. All right. Between myself and Patch, yeah, I'll try to learn more about that as well. Um, I, I, I haven't, I haven't learned about that, that program of which you speak. <laughs> okay. I have a question. If, sure. Uh, sure. Go ahead. So, hi, it's Ingrid Ingersoll. Nice to have you back. It's very nice hey, to Ingrid. have you back. Nice um, to see you. My gosh, that's yeah. a, that's an old name from a long it's time ago. It's an old ago. name. <laughs> So I still log in to like decorate and landscape. Um, that's primarily why I'm here, because if I was redecorating my condo every two seconds, I'd be broke. But I can do it in Second Life. So um, <laughs> right. I still have a, a place on the mainland, that, a plot that I've had for a long time. And I was wondering if there were any plans to sort of, I don't know, spruce up the mainland. I, there's a lot of like, I mean, I hate to say this, but there's a lot of like old mole stuff that's been around for like probably 15 years that isn't looking so good now. Um, and then people for a while were kicking around the idea of like mainland textures or new ones. Um, I was just wondering if anything is being considered for the mainland, basically. As I, as I said earlier, I know there's some changes to the mainland related to the, uh, to, to improvements to, for everybody on materials and stuff. Um, but as I said earlier, I really think the mainland is cool. And I think that while we've... Um, I do too, by the way. Yeah. We've, I, we've, I just, there's some stuff there that maybe should be edited at this point. Send me your ideas on it. I mean, I, I, I think the general observation is, and I actually think the statistics support it, people use the mainland like a lot. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, even though the mainland makes up a, a smaller fraction of the total landmass now, the actual user hours per region is, um, I, I think, similar on there. So I think that huh. we might be, we may be undervaluing the connectedness of larger communities, basically. And then yeah. I, I'd like to figure out ways to do that better. You know, some of the experimental stuff that whether it's, you know, whether it's communities doing co-owned co -owned land, you know, or things like the racing sims or the sailing sims, right? That feels really amazing to me. Mm -hmm. and like maybe there's stuff we can do in the software to make it easier to do those kinds of things, you know? I, in short, I'd like to see larger and larger uh, public and uh, co-owned uh, builds and I, you know, that, that kind of at a high level, that's what I feel like. And, you know, as, as I mean, I it's a very visual, on, we can work on it. Yeah. It's a very visual place, too. And we have new people come in and they see, you know, there's large areas that really just don't look great. So I, I feel like, I, I don't know, maybe from like a retention perspective, that might be worthwhile. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Ingrid. Nice to, nice to hear you. Yeah, you too. I, you're you're I far enough away from me back there, I can't see you. Hi, who is that? Hi, Philip, it's Buffy Bill. Hi. Like, ages and ages ago. Can I just nice ask? to see you. Buffy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hold um, on there, it sounds like Mal. Mal, you're, you're proud to mute yourself. No, oh, no, as usual, sorry. <laughs> I'm here. Yep. yep, there you go, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to say, can you please include the word non-profits? when you're talking about education, because we have a huge presence here. Um, think mm -hmm. Real for Life, Nonprofit Commons, um, I could mm -hmm. go on. And um, it, it just seems we kind of get lumped in with education, and we're actually um, quite, we're separate, but we're connected. So just, noticed, I noticed uh, the other day, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's um, up. Thanks thank a lot. You. Great. Um, I noticed that, 
Yeah, and it was funny, a, a warm note in that regard. I think I was looking at um, maybe like cash payouts or something, and I was noticing that the American Cancer Society is still doing the great work that they've been doing here for for uh, 20 years. My gosh, I don't know how much <laughs> they've raised for, for cancer research, but it's certainly been uh, a non-trivial amount. And yeah, the nonprofit commons, um, um, I'm remembering when I spoke before Congress next to uh, Susan, I think, from... Yep, um, Susan Tenby. Susan Tenby. Was this is Rhiannon kind of Chat Noir, by the way. Oh, Speaking hi. Of nonprofit Commons, hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> to have hi, you Rhiannon. Back. Hey, hey, um, hey, so many hey, names. hey, hey, yeah. old beats in the room, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, NPC has been still meeting every, every week wow. since that time. Um, I mean, of course, Susan founded it, but then like, um, the nonprofit that, I, like, we created a nonprofit to pick up the Second Life Community Convention, Avacon. So we ran the last two, myself and others. And then we also used that nonprofit to, like, we took over nonprofit commons and, and, yep. and, uh, fiscally manage that too. So, yeah, no, I mean, I think there are many of us in this room, obviously, that, uh, that are, um, would love to kind of like, you know, help in regards to especially any of these like community things. And I think getting out these more positive stories, you know, in the day to day of the many of us who never left SL, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Since 2005, January 2005, at least for myself. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, we're happy. Happy you're back. Gus, that's great. I, I think one thing we're going to do is we're going to try to use this group, you know, join my group. Um, oh, mm -hmm. geez, I should look at it and see how many people are in it. That could be kind of fun. But Very popular, um, Philip. Very popular. We're, we're going to try to maybe use that group as like a flash mob tool or something to go on tours. Or like to go and hang out at different people's places. Um, so look, look for that in the future. I'd like to, you know, like do a series of events where we just kind of, you know, show up at different places and see somewhere new, um, as a means of, you know, both talking to each other, but also just having fun and looking at places that we haven't seen before. You know, on the tough subject of makeover, I heard somebody say that and I saw the chat go by on making. <laughs> I mean, one, let me just recognize, you know, the elephant in the room, which is it's very hard to get dressed in second life. <laughs> um, I also think we've done ourselves a, a, some self-harm um, over the years by basically increasing the capability of things like the clothing system without ever in, uh, decreasing its uh or making it easier to use, right? We've, we've allowed it to get harder to use with more capabilities. So yes, that's good in that it allows people to look like who they, it allows people to express themselves in the way that they want with their avatar, but it obviously has this big downside, which is it feels to me like we've kind of been gradually making Second Life harder and harder to use, which is just lame. Um, and I think it's- a laptop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and I, we got to re-examine some of this. As I touched on earlier, the, one of the questions is: Do we do this by, do we do this by making optional or you know incremental changes to the the user experience that you know you're seeing when you use Firestorm, which is obviously what, what almost everyone here is using, um, or do we do something where we start from scratch, like we did with mobile, and just build an entirely new experience where we don't add UI at all? It, there's just a design question of what the easier way is to go. But I think, as I said earlier, the, the pillars of design principle for us will be we're going to keep the full capacity UI forever because we just have to. And, you know, the best UI for that is Firestorm, you know, by the numbers, like by, you know, very prominently. So we're going to keep that UI available to everybody that wants to have the 747, you know. I was laughing with someone the other day, and I was saying, this is like, I mean, I'm, hopefully I'll get a laugh out of everybody here. Coming back, looking at Second Life's interface, I was like, you know what this is like? This is like simultaneously using the most complex 3D editor you've ever <laughs> used. Let's, let's say it's Blender, right, or pick your poison, right, Maya, whatever. You've got the most complicated 3D editor open, every window open on that 3D editor, right? And then at the same time, you have the UI from one of those siege uh, experiences in World of Warcraft, right, where you're managing <laughs> yeah. 100 people in real time and talking and, like, giving instructions. I mean, sec isn't Second Life in some ways kind of like both of those UIs overlapped at the same time? <laughs> and I'm yeah. like... 
We're like we're like those English taxi drivers, right? To be a London taxi driver, you have to memorize a map so complicated and know it by heart that they do brain studies on the people who become London taxi drivers because their brains are probably different than other people's brains. Yeah. And I, I look at Second Life's UI and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, like we we've done great. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's just been so many different little pieces of it that have been done well, but taken together. Holy moly. You know, I mean, I'm coming back and trying to use this thing, and well, I haven't been able to get my YouTube, clothes on. There's some good YouTube videos if you ever need to figure out the clothing system. <laughs> Let's go back to it. Let's go back to the makeup. Can, 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 can I offer something? I'm pretty okay. basic here. You know, I've been with you all since 2008. I've been an SO, and, and uh, you know, not always online life. RL always takes over sometimes, but... When you were talking about this, um, the first thing that came to my mind is the information that I've gotten from different groups, you know, different uh, uh, seller groups, different uh, uh, creator groups. Uh, if you have a question, you go to a creator group that you're a member of, a group member, and you can ask questions. That is a resource. Yes. Unbelievable resource, yes. and we should give them we should from Atreya give, bodies yeah, and right, yeah exactly and also um i'm a, a linguist uh, and in nature and in work and i think uh, uh, language acquisition uh, really should be strongly supported in sl uh, yeah. internationally uh and and there's ways of doing that i think to make it part of the process and and getting into SL and feeling part of the community by mm -hmm. supporting those different languages. So, sorry. That's, that's, that's very true. The welcome hub <laughs> language is a problem. Thank you. Thank you. I want to I want to go back to the, the the redesigning my avatar and use it both as a So first of all, everybody wants to redo my avatar, so I guess maybe we should do that. No. No. It's excellent. Thank you. Let me be your first. Oh, 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 but let me say that I like the way I look. So, I mean, I, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I like the core conceptual framing of Philip Linden, you know, who I am. I've always enjoyed that. But I'd be very happy to have somebody um, uh, uh, do a makeover for me. I'd also be personally interested in <laughs> Cody, hang on. The, the question that I would have for everybody is this, which is, um, how would we best decide who should give me a makeover? How would we do that, you know, and, and, and what body to use or whatever, or what Just system do it to use? Contest. Right. I guess the makeover Philip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what I what I'd like to what I'd like to do is invite you to first of all talk about it in this group that I'm forming, and then second, <laughs> um, let's use this as a study case. What's the like? What's the best way to do that? You know. Why not get the actual body the... creators? Hold on. Sorry, I was just going to say, why not actually yeah. get the body creators to create their. Philip Linden look. Oh, and then their own customer yeah. bases and groups can go and vote on it, and you can see which body that's creator good. gets Ooh, the best vote. That's an idea too. That's that not a bad supported idea. Supported across the grid. Amazing. Yeah. I think though, it, I think what you have to understand in, in a good design briefing, right? There's a bit of your own branding, Philip, that is tied to the way that yes. why this avatar is True. the way this is. So how right. does that translate forward into any other choice totally. that may come down the path? How are you going to be your authentic self? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and what people don't know is like, I mean, at least some of us who were back in that original room, like the very first like Second Life Community Convention was in New York City. And it was like in, in partnership with the, the State of Play conference that was happening in, out of New York yes. School. And okay. Philip showed up. And well, although they gate, they sort of materials were just were given to him to exactly dress him up like this. So there are oh, photos wish. of Philip like this. 
You made me. We made me me. Yes, yes, cod piece and all, or shiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to suggest this though. You know how the royals always put portraits behind with their family and their babies and their grandbabies like that. With Philip's new look sitting at a desk and his old look in a picture frame behind him. And no matter what the season is, have it changed with it. They always keep that picture in the background. <laughs> I love it. I feel like Dorian Gray. I love um, it. Dorian Gray. <laughs> Philip, the new Philip. Uh, I, I, I actually question. have a question too. Uh, Philip, okay. uh, regarding the, the groups, can we get more? Please, please, please. As, as You'd as like to have more? More people, more groups. Yeah, more groups. Yeah, it's all yeah. filled up, and I would love to join so much more, but it's not possible. And yes, I have a pro account since years, but no, it's not enough. Okay. Actually, um, uh, Philip, the amount of back. is there? I guess what one thing I would ask is: is there any downside to letting people join like an infinite number of groups? Yes. Can I just? Can I just say that land being associated with groups is something that should actually be looked at more so because if you're a content creator or you're involved in communities, sometimes 11 of the groups that you have are just because so you can res things for an event you're in or because you need to pay rent somewhere and that just sucks up all your groups. Mm, gotcha. and Groups should be social and more engaging, but you've got everything associated with land. So mm -hmm. maybe look at how to free up land, not needing so much group space. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Could be a way to go around that. To say something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And then what were you going to say? This, this is Ruby, and Ruby. I get what I'm really saying. I've been here since 2008, but recently I created a little avatar just to try. I got hacked, I got fished, I got hit with $259.99 through my PayPal Linda Lab twice. And I had two premium, two premium plus counts on top of that premium. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit upset about this sort of stuff. I understand where you guys are coming from. And yeah, sure, have a group over there for your designers because I used to help um, estate people where they would set up houses and I would set their houses on there and I had to have groups for each land. I get that. Have a group for that. But, and I understand where you need more groups because you want to do it. And, that, and the reason why that's about it is because a lot of these new freebie groups will make you join their groups to, to get on their freebie stuff. It yeah. used to be you could go through this, the, the um, to, um, to try, but you can't do that anymore. But And, and thank you, Linda and my app, for fixing that and getting the money back from me. But the hassle from it is, like, I have a mortgage tomorrow. I, I was worried about losing my mortgage. So I'm really sorry that this, happened. I, I am really upset about the fact. I, I'm glad you could do in the mobile, but I don't like the fact that the mobile has access to getting in here. That they could go in here and they could hack somebody's account and take it like they did mine. I'm sorry that happened, Ruby. If there's anything more that we need to do um, that you need help with, feel free to email me about but I it. I ended up having to cancel all my premium accounts, give up all my land, all my house. I had three houses. I had to give them all up there. I had to cancel my. I had to get a new debit card. I had to. Contact PayPal, my bank, and, yeah. and then on top of everything, now I have to go through a friend to go through another way to get to pay for her tier, and I can't pay to get Linton's in here because I can't use my PayPal because I'm afraid this person's going to hack into my account again. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm seeing people saying one, Ruby, thank you. Email me if you need additional help. Two. Um, people are talking about multi-factor authentication. I do think we need to do more options for that, but we do have that on the accounts now, so you can set up multi-factor authentication to make it much more secure. Um, so I, I, I invite everybody though. to consider that. Um, yeah, I, well, I think we also need, if I'm not mistaken, I think we have authenticator-based MFA, but not uh, like just second device, you know, text message-based MFA, did I think. It did not save me, though. It did not save me. Do it. Mm, um, man, another, sorry, I had an... I had an idea, Philip, the other day um, when I was uh -huh. seeing all these reports about theft and, and stuff like that. Uh -huh. A lot of people use an alt account as a bank account, like they put all their money in an alt and then and then they cash it out. I was wondering if you would ever consider giving right. people the option to lock accounts so money can't go out of them other than to a designated hmm. account. So if you uh -huh. had an alt account 
all your splits for your vendors, say, could go to that account automatically. That account cannot have money come out of it except to the main account that you designate through the dashboard and, and so on. Um, so idea. as an extra security. And I think, I think many people tend to use another account too as their mule for their land, right? So uh -huh. that, that becomes another piece of it. And, and there are complexities with those of us who have like nonprofits because uh, like there's no way to have a nonprofit <clears throat> account. There's no way to take donations and apply them out to something that because the, the standard is that an account should be a person and that person should have a, their individual tax ID and not an EIN. So it makes donations hard too. There's always been these weird little financial things behind the scenes that many of us kind of use these weird alt avatars as kind of yeah. ways, but still can't solve some of those things like that. Yeah, obviously the thing with alt accounts as well <clears throat> is that it makes it difficult for us to reckon uh, different aspects of things we're doing right or wrong. I can totally commiserate, like one problem is, as we've been trying to figure out what we did wrong in the rendering uh, and system more broadly with respect to the uh, PBR changes that, you know, culminated in the, the uh, Firestorm release that really dropped performance for everybody. The, the presence of the alt accounts is one of the things, this is a side point, but because alt accounts are used so many different ways, the usage of them and tracking usage looking at alt accounts is really tricky. It's a, it's, it's an interesting problem that we've got. But uh, yeah, thanks thanks for that feedback. I, I got you. Uh, Phil, Phil like, yeah. um, I just wanted to say, Phil. so some other uh, visual network, things like uh, VR chat, for example, they have over time you gain rank mm -hmm. systems like trusted user. If we were to bring in something like that to Second Life, so the older users who've been here for some time would get benefits, for example, more groups and things like that, um, and be the ability to, to gain access to stuff that was more, you know, advanced or some of the stuff you're bringing in, which stops some of the users who are sort of newer having access to things that they maybe could use in a malicious way. It would allow... Mm -hmm people who come onto the platform to want to stay longer because they're going to gain these things and, and feel like they're leveling up in Second Life, um, mm -hmm. but also keep users who are new from using it these items in malicious ways. So we're not being punished for users who are coming in in a negative light. So basically you, what you're saying broadly is look at the degree to which tenure in Second Life or Age in Second Life can be tied to capabilities. I would say as well as you're standing within Second Life, your communication, the groups that you're in, things that you've done in Second Life, have you had abuse reports thrown at you, things like that would kind yeah. of give you like a secret hidden rating, if you would, for your avatar and what you've done within the, the platform. And as such, you would... Yeah. Um, gain access to certain things that maybe other avatars wouldn't due yeah. to your standing within the platform. Yeah, think, let me say one thing about ranking in general, if I could just if I could just carry on a, a bit about this because it's one of my favorite design areas and one that we've explored quite a bit with Fair Share. Um, I don't know how many people saw that crazy Black Mirror episode called Nosedive. Probably a lot of people here, right? It's pretty funny. Um, I, I always say to people, if you're a systems designer and you haven't seen several Black Mirror episodes, but certainly Nosedive, you just need to stop what you're doing right now and go and do that before you continue writing software and potentially causing harm. Um, but Nosedive actually shows a rating system that is not right, but it actually begs a question about what the right kind of rating system would be. So as other folks have said here in the chat already, global rating systems can always, this, okay, and let me start, start, this is my opinion as a designer, so I'm not, I'm not certain of this, but let me tell you what I think. Global reputation systems, that is to say something like how many friends you have, how many groups you've joined, um, uh, how many dollars you spent or something like that. Things that are based on activity that is kind of measured at a global scale and then applied to create a rating are deeply problematic because you can always reverse engineer the system and then cheat, right? You always see this with things like Twitter or, you know, Google, you know, Google ads or whatever. If you're, if you're using a public system that has a global algorithm, everybody is going to abuse it and harm each other in a variety of different ways. That said, I actually think there's a way to do reputation and ratings that is 
group based. It's it's it, the best technical description of it is what's called web of trust. A web of trust is when you so so imagine that right now I have a hundred friends in Second Life. I, I think I have more than that, but you know, so say I have a hundred friends in Second Life. Every time I meet a new person, the data question I should be able to ask is, what do my hundred friends think of this person? Like as it relates to say their building skills or their trust trustworthiness, you know, what do, what do my friends actually think? That's what's called a web of trust approach where you don't have a global score, but you have a way of accessing what your, the, the people that you trust think of another person, group, whatever. And that mechanism creates a kind of a graph of data about how people uh, trust each other that is not uh, at all easy to cheat. Um, in fact, I think it's formally impossible. So this is the reason why uh, webs of trust and kind of community-based or group-based local reputation systems are the right way to do things. And yeah, I'm seeing somebody say it. There's a bunch of grassroots ways in which this has already been done just by the very fact that local communities in Second Life have so much high, have, have so much important standing, you know, like what the neighborhood you're in may sanction you for something you've done, for example, in a way that doesn't require the opinion of a global company or anyone else, you know, to adjudicate. So I think that local uh, web of trust based reputation systems are something that we should be thinking about as a way of creating more trust. Uh, say particularly in people that are coming in newer. I also agree with what somebody else said in there, which is I don't want to just tie standing to tenure because it's classist. You know, we 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 don't want to just you know say that it, it, just because you've been in Second Life for ten years, you're a better person than everybody else. You know, so I think there's a kind of a a trade off there. But I think this web of trust way can be used very broadly to do a lot of very sensible things, not just in Second Life, by the way, but in the in the world uh, more broadly. Yeah, gra graph database of trust. Thank you. Somebody just typed that. That's a more technically correct uh, term. So I have yeah, something social I wanted graph. to ask. Sure. Sure. Um, this is Marcus Llewellyn. Hi, Marcus. Um, hi. Oh, hi. Nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Um, so I, I was just curious, and I realized if if we need evidence that you got a lot on your plate, this this was it. Um, but uh, just the same, I was wondering about the viewer and performance. And uh -huh. uh, you know, we're still, if I'm not mistaken, we're still using OpenGL here, and I understand to a degree why, because as you've said previously, we want to you know include as many users as we possibly can, but. Isn't there going to come a point where relying on OpenGL is just no longer a, a reliable path that you can only kick that can so far down yeah. the road? Yeah, that's right. I think that's, Marcus, I think that's the problem. It's one of the problems we have to contemplate in thinking about how to move forward on the viewer. Going back to accessibility, I think the fact that we just crash so often in OpenGL as one does when you write a completely custom engine on top of, you know, a very, very sophisticated, you know, rendering you know, system of any kind means that we, we, I think we're just sort of crashing too much um, by, by, you know, th through the fact that we have a very, very sophisticated um, rendering challenge in front of us. So I think the question though, Marcus is, yeah, as we look at ways to, you know, say modernize our, our use of OpenGL or get off of it entirely or, or get onto another engine, we just have to be mindful of what I said earlier, which is that, uh, the population of people that we're useful for um, includes a lot of people who don't build water-cooled gaming PCs at home for fun. You know, uh, I think that uh, we have to be mindful of the fact that 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 gamers who are a really unique bunch in their interest in understanding and working with very advanced, you know, hardware and drivers and all that stuff. You know, they they're a subset of folks in Second Life, but they're not at all. I don't even think they're a majority. Um, I think that we've got a majority of people who probably would rather not bother a lot with, you know, uh, learning about the latest NVIDIA driver release. I hope I'm I not closing. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> this is North here. Um, <coughs> I have on, a Cody. question. I have a question okay. about um, um, the state of Linden Lab there. So recently it was sold to um, a 
holding company that which Brad apparently, uh -huh. uh, apparently owns now. What is the future for Linen Lab um, going forward and now it's been held by a holding company? Um, great question. So about four years ago, the company was bought by Brad Oberwalker and Randy Waterfield. Brad is a close personal friend of mine for a long time, as folks have probably heard before. Um, so it's been a kind of a not a standard kind of private equity deal because you know the, the participants are, are are people that are deeply interested in and invested in what we're doing and and in and, and one of them a personal friend of mine um, although I know Randy as well but not, not so not nearly so well as I know Brad I think that um, really though from the standpoint of the business and our ability to do things and our ability to grow hasn't really had like that much of an impact um the the transition of ownership from the original you know venture capitalists and my and and employees you know who 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 own stock in the company to the company as it stands today which is you know it 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 still has uh you know stock i think somebody asked one of the questions was do i own stock in the company yes i do simple answer um i, I do own stock in second life myself um i think that we it, things don't look a lot different. I mean, we're we're a as I mentioned at the beginning, we're a much better operating business today with much higher um, profits, and so we have the ability to invest in ourselves in ways that we didn't, and that's thanks to to Brad and Randy, um, and, and the team. Uh, like a lot of the work that's been done over the last few years, so we're pretty uh, we're, we're pretty well set up to act like a startup going forward and um, uh, do marketing to accelerate growth and you know reinvest in. You know, new capabilities like what we're talking about. You know, like uh, more accessibility, uh, maybe different types of viewers. Uh, we can do all those things. So we're we're in a we're in a pretty good spot. And you know, I, I'd say we we look like a very successful um, small uh, private you know kind of startup uh, in terms of you know where we are and what we're able to do. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Cody, I can't hear you after I had an I have an island. Um that was the first word I got. I still didn't quite get that. If, if anybody else, if if anyone understands Cody and can type that for me, go for it. Or is standing a little closer. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> I have a, uh, a question if you have a second, Philip. Open up the what? <laughs> the Hang on one second, yeah, let me try to hear Cody here. You need help opening up your <laughs> island? You open up the Aaron Sea to the island? <laughs> oh. Oh, got it, got it. So, Cody, is that what you're asking about? Connecting islands to the mainland? <laughs> Can you help me connect my island? Okay. Um, let me actually, let me actually think about that. Um, let, let me, Cody. Let me come back. I'm just writing a note right now about this. I've got a, definitely a few actionable things here. Uh, can we connect um, existing islands uh, to mainland? I think that's actually a really interesting question that I've. Heard. <laughs> Could I make it? Could I make it? I, I heard you say that. Could I make it? Or make the seas? Yes, I see somebody saying make the seas sailable or flyable. I know. I, I was, whenever I look at the Second Life map, I have that thought. I'm like, that'd be so cool. Yeah, Second Life Norway are kind of examples that are already being done. Yeah. There's no formal process. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, let me let me let me think about that and thank you broadly for that, Cody. And let me think more about connecting directly to the mainland. And then let me shift to somebody. Somebody started to ask me a question there while while Cody was last talking. Who was that? Uh, I think that was probably me. Yep. Um, question cool. about kind of just kind of the future of of kind of just new kind of three uh, D rendering things coming to uh, 
to Second Life. From my, mm-hmm. my perspective as a, as a creator and builder, I'm more excited about like some of the stuff coming from GOTF, like, uh, like um, punctual lights and uh, GOTF scene import uh, with yeah. that coming with custom bones, custom animations, and basically basically bringing Second Life into the year 2024 and instead of Second Life 2008, which is where it is kind of right now, because it, yeah. it almost feels very limiting and restrictive to what I can do in Second Life versus to what I can do in pretty much any other 3D content platform. Yeah. So I know we've already got kind of the PBR, which is kind of like the step one of modernizing Second Life. What we yeah. see kind of as a vision wise, as far as, you know, we're, we're, when we're getting like GOTF scene import, HDRI skies for better lighting, punctual lights for, for better lighting that way, yeah. uh, global illumination from like, say, like yeah. uh, Bixelizer and that kind of things. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, I agree with you on the content creation side that expanding to broad standards like GLTF is definitely directionally correct for sure. Um, that said, as I mentioned earlier, I think one of the challenges, understandably, in the past, what we've done is we've added new capabilities, like take GLTF as a new format, right? Like imagine that we have GLTF done and we have animations and bones and rigging and, you know, everything that's in GLTF, right? I think one of the challenges we've historically made is what we, what we tend to do, understandably, is we deploy that new capability alongside backwards compatibility with all the other capabilities. And that causes this problem that I mentioned earlier, which I don't know how to solve yet, but I'm just saying it out loud because it's what I'm thinking about and what I think we all need to be thinking about as we debate this stuff and be sensitive to, is that if we, we're we gonna ultimately fail if we just add new things like GLTF without taking anything out and we just add them right next to everything else because it's like the bodies that we touched on earlier. Bodies are now much more compelling in the way that you can build your avatar in Second Life, but they're, it, it's made the whole thing way harder and it was already excruciatingly hard. So we've got to figure out how to somehow add these global standards like GLTF, but do it in a way that both doesn't kick off 30% of our users or something and then on the performance side. And then two, as you're talking about, um, presents those options in a way that reduces overall complexity in the UX. And that's the thing that I'm not really sure how best to do, but we're going to figure it out. You know, we're going to look at what our approaches, what our strategies are going forward to, you know, building entirely different ways of experiencing Second Life and using stuff that's more modern and more standards based, right? We, we, I mean, the ideal, what we all want, right, is to have the rendering look as modern as possible, right? Like look like Unreal or something, right? Just totally, you know, everything works. Use all these standard formats so that the most, most content out there can do it. But the the problem is that we, uh, you, you know, the, the problem is we can't do that if we add more complexity to the existing UX. So that's the thing that I'm, I'm yeah, uh, I think I think that's why I'm really about. excited about it because it it, mm-hmm. it allows for that type of separation where the main viewer can can really you, know, you you can really much have a much more simpler UX in the viewer, but then for all those of us for content creation who need those much, much more complex controls. Let us have those in Blender, Blender, Maya, 3DSS, Houdini, whatever, can have those complex controls. We do all the complex things. GOTF, if we expand on that, lets us input that into Second Life. Then in Second Life, it, you know, the end user can just use a very, much more simplified UI, and then you allow both groups to kind of really express themselves. Though I think you have to be mindful, really? though. I think you have to be mindful, though, that you do not want to take content creation away from every user, at least in some way, because that is, I think, another special sauce of Second Life, right? Right. right. Like that magic of creating. So otherwise, you end up down the same path as Sansar, right? And you've gone that yeah. way. It should be, it should one, of the things I'm, one of the things I'm curious about, by the way, sitting with a group like this in that regard, is what do you all think about, like, imagine if you could use AI not to build content, but to suggest content. Like, imagine if you could... For example, um, okay. imagine if you could imagine if you could say something like uh, imagine if you could describe a place like like you could just say I want to be sitting in a forest with a creek and a campfire and the following sort of avatar right and imagine if AI was able to actually do that using 
it, you know, it basically find you stuff in the world and then instantly, you know, create things out of it for you. I, I wonder whether that might not be compelling given how hard positioning and, you know, finding things I mean, is. It certainly would probably be neat, but you still would have to weigh that against performance issues and cutting into the yeah. creator marketplace angle too. Well, what I'm talking about is something where you'd actually be, well, I'm struck by the fact that although sometimes people have used AI to kind of replace creators or whatever, you know, in different yeah. market segments, like in gaming or whatever, it doesn't actually, you don't actually have to do that. You, you, you could use AI to simply shop, basically, right? You know, you know what I mean? Like I, I could say, mm -hmm. build something for me by looking at everything in the marketplace, but then I'm still ultimately buying all that stuff from the marketplace creators. You know what I mean? Like if I said, I want a, I want a tiki, I want a tiki hut, you know, uh, 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 from from stuff that's actually available from content creators. And what what if AI did the selection of that? You know, the the AI was like your butler or something that was like, well, I've bought. So it still would be pulling from existing marketing. Yeah, place. yeah, yeah. It'd be yeah, using. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like so many people are doing direct prompt three D work right now, including many of my friends in AI. But it's hard, as you all know. I mean, yeah, like doing yeah. an actual good job of making 3D content directly from AI, we're not even there yet, not at all. So it's it's, it's interesting to think about other ideas. And I'm going to have to go in. Uh, let me let me tell everybody. I'm going to have to go in about two minutes. So one more talk. The problem with um, mm -hmm. making AI a part of the shopping experience is mm -hmm. what would the selection process be based on if it's keywords or something similar it's going to be gamed and instead of the tiki hat you wanted you'll end up with penis on on top of your head <laughs> right. you know? right. yeah, yeah 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 exactly yeah sure. otherwise you have to have sure sort point. of image recognition to figure out what the ai thinks it's oh, seeing well i asked for three I, things i also putting out other three things yeah, yeah. I also wonder about whether we can do a better job of buying and and uh, buying and exploring and shopping and stuff in world as compared to the marketplace. I don't know what the split looks like there, but that's one of the again just saying out loud one of the interesting design pattern questions that I continue to have is like we've got two parallel paths for uh, you know shopping. You know, one of them's in world and one of them's in marketplace and. I wonder, I don't, I don't know what that means, but it feels complicated to me. It's one of the things that I'm just but like, you know, on, wow. You're on, if in the marketplace with uh, limited or, or demos, they still put mm -hmm. it out there. You can't, even if you check not to see it, it's still put yeah. it out there. How does that uh, compare? How does that uh, compare your marketplace data but the, 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 oh, versus I'm not, in world? I'm not sure. I could get back to you on that. If you ask me that yeah. in email, I might be able to give you an answer. I'm sure. not sure. One more, one more question from the gentleman who just started talking. Yes. Um, what if? Because I, I heard someone earlier say that um, don't take away building rights for everyone and building capabilities. What if you had to unlock it by going through a certain amount of classes to prove mm -hmm. that you're not using your building capabilities to like troll or spam or something like that? Like you can't unlock the abilities to build until you can prove yourself that you can actually do it yourself. Let me answer that by saying I think you're I think you're on to something in the sense that um, and I'm going to go back to my previous answer. If as communities we had ways of like giving people marks of approval almost like better business bureau which is exactly the way you're in in the way that you're suggesting like you're you're you've you've taken a course or something and you've validated yourself as being able to responsibly use creation tools i love that idea um i think that the way to enable that and which is maybe what i'm hoping to do with this group and have some kind of experimental stuff we do in the group is to play with governance techniques that would get us a kind of a bottom up way of doing that what i mean by that is I don't think you should have to prove to the Lindens that you're a trustworthy builder to be allowed to build. I think that would be a mistake because that'll be that glo gaming global algorithm problem I mentioned earlier. But I think your idea can be deployed at the level of, for example, groups and using a mechanism where, you know, if you don't have the Better Business Bureau seal of approval or whatever, you might not be able to get as many jobs building houses for people or something like that. So I think there's a way to do that, like bottom up from the group perspective rather than top down the from the uh, whole company. And I'm going to have to, uh, I'm sorry, I, I've got to run because I've got to jump into a meeting with uh, Brad in a few minutes. And uh, uh, although he is only a few feet away from me, I need to use the bathroom and get a little food before I do that. So. <laughs> It's really been nice to talk to everybody. I deeply appreciate uh, the yeah, time thank here. Thank you. It's been and, nice. Um, 
Thank you so much for, for staying longer. And I, please join that group of mine, and we'll, we'll get together much sooner. Um, uh, you will see. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope so. Thank you. Yeah. It's so Thank nice you. to be back. To it's so nice to be back. About that. On my college yeah, campus you. website, they have a thing that you watch the video. And once you do the video and you take the test, it's yeah, like a little gone. test thing and make that. They give you a completion. It says you completed it with your, your name. They can do that with your avatar name and the date on there. And the Better Business Bureau could you do that with you probably. Because they do that with our college. And that gets the new students that come into there um, able to know what the rules are of the game or rules of the school. Yeah, but what I was saying is like um, some people can just go through SL and not want to build, you know, and that's fine. Some people won't want to like dance or hang out with friends or race cars. That's fine. But to do something, I don't want to say important because that sounds rude, but something that's um, impactful. That you're interested in. Yeah, I believe, but you have to like. They came back after they realized, oh, it's still going. Yeah, well, Billy Furry does a very really great thing of teaching and really he puts the, the classes yeah. down. And then there's the hippo uh, school, too, you know, and there's a lot of schools out there for different people that speak different languages, you know. Yeah, the problem isn't like being able to build. It's should you be, um, should it be kind of like suppressed so that not everyone can just like res prim out and put scripts in it that blows up half the sim, you know. Yeah, though the percentage, I mean, it, it, it to believe it or not, right, there were days where you would get, like, repetitive object ta attacks and objects would fill a region, like, gone are those mm -hmm. days. So, and, 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 and so I think you have to weigh it with security versus the idea, though, that there is a bit of magic that, like, if you want to actually keep people here, right, it comes down to social and community, and then also, for a good percentage of people, the ability to build. And some people, that first, oh, my God, I just rezzed a prim, is the part of that magic, right? Yeah. And even if it's just like, you know, the first thing I did was like, oh, my God, I'm going to take my real-life artwork and I'm going to put it on a prim. I'm going to text you a thing, and it's like, sounds so simple, but that little box, box is what so stuck me. <laughs> no, something green. No, I get it. I, I make stuff myself, like, all the time. I'm tinkering with stuff. And yeah, yeah. Like, I, I'm I love sure it. many of us here the do. the fact that I'm also a <clears throat> sim owner, and I, 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 I come from the days pre-mesh, and I know the what you about, things will oh, like, jazz out and, like, take out the whole sim. That's my fear of somebody bringing that back, and by limiting the ability to build it would it's like a double-edged sword it's like yeah yes you get when they... security but you don't get that magic at the same and time. and there's something else to consider too i think that's very important is that building tools are not just for creators how many times have any of us had to adjust their hat using building tools or a hud Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, these are things, yeah, and sure, they can be scripted, but even that isn't always perfect, right? So, unfortunately, it's just too bound up into... Yeah, that is true. I think yeah. that was a very yeah. interesting idea to, um, you know, have people kind of qualify um, by a learning process, but it's really, it does end up not being practical, because I would say the majority of residents really do not build or uh, create or anything like that. And um, if the goal is to keep out griefers, um, they're t generally more advanced and they can yeah. only do a task yeah. like that. <clears throat> but then they plop out a prim, a scripted prim and, um, you know, clutter a sim. Um, it's it the wrong to say no script yeah, if you're not in the group, you know? The only critical thing with griefers is probably a time-based, hey, have you been at least around for a week? Kind of thing because a yeah. lot of them are just day one. So uh, SWANK has it where you have to be in thing. game for over so many days or you can't even get on your sim. Yeah, yeah. a lot of games do that. Yeah, I think exactly. that, that, that's actually some. something yeah. that, that would be a great tool, I think, also. Um, a lot of games do that, actually, where um, new users, unless they are, you know, at a certain um, you know, age of account or maybe a paid account, depending on what kind of a format um, the game has, um, they can, not um, you know, perform larger transactions and things like that. So I think that something similar to that should apply to new accounts in SL. Um, because, yes, yeah, griefers, griefers, at least, it, 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 it,
Exactly. I like to see them where they put it where you can't put outside accounts in your chat. Like we, I mean, there, there's not going to, there's not going to be a perfect fix ever. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. you know, like little steps here and there, and this would be one of those <clears> steps <throat> to at least make it a little bit less of an instant gratification. And um, if they didn't prepare accounts in advance. Then, then at least you know it'll take longer for them to come back and people can have a little bit of peace in the meantime yeah 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 the problem with griefers are like even if you have it where you can only get on a sim with your you know with the group they will have someone get in your group and then you know they'll do it from within like if a griefer is going to grief whatever they want they'll find a way it's just how is the best way to combat that is the issue, the issue. we need um we need a much um, better and faster process of um, when somebody is being report reported to actually um get enforcement um the especially on weekends when the banks aren't open and like that it well with with anything um um 24 7 actually availability would be what's yeah. needed and of course it's a resource issue I say bring back the cornfield. I have never been to the cornfield, so I, I have I, no I, idea. I second that. Let's bring back oh, the cornfield. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it was, it wasn't it, you all was it in one of the other wow. games. They had it like, like a little prison off. You could see it in way that the people stuck in there, but they couldn't leave and you could walk around them and everything, but they were stuck in that little building. Oh, so a pillory, huh? <laughs> In essence, the cornfield was a little like that, although you couldn't really look in. But they were wished out to the cornfield, basically, which was just a big sim of nothing but cornfield. Stuff. You could have played popcorn music with it. Even the <laughs> cornfield game isn't functional either at the moment. Yeah, yeah. The game was fun. Take a picture of him put the wall of shame. Ooh, wall of shame, wall of shame, yes. Or maybe their avatar could only render as a... Uh, uh, a roof. Yeah, just... <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. They no, could do no, anything no. I mean, that was ever removed. Because then that's going and, and uh, disgracing all of the good roofs out there. Oh. That's true. Okay, just a turd then. A turd. <laughs> With a sad face. <laughs> oh, yes. Sad face. Or a stick person. Well, no, because there's good stick persons out there, too. There's even paper dolls. Yeah. Well, is there, like... Is just there, a like... bad hat. So, so you just have to wear a hat. It can be anything, but you have to wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a, a, a group or a way to connecting these groups? Uh, I know I know of the nonprofits. I know of the uh, different designer groups. But and you know you can look on on SL. You can look on their website, or you happen to run into someone that shares that. And as I had mentioned, a lot of the uh, creator groups that they have such great people in there with great information you know i i think that they should see some kind of uh connection you know what i'm saying yeah, i don't know exactly. if that makes it's sense highlighting and encouraging the good and useful community groups to actually have power to uh affect things and and, and really spread the information and light that they do yeah because i mean that's kind of the problem isn't it for a lot of new users is knowing how to navigate and these people in these different groups that you know you go in and into the chat and they're helping and they're giving their time that's that's quite they need to see kind of a praise to it does that make sense even there is was need to be uh, guarded too because I created a new because I was in a car accident and um, I'm trying to get back some of my memory and um, so I've forgotten things so I thought okay I'll create a new and it'd be nice relaxed like that 
And I had guys hitting on me in the in the firestorm starter, you know, hey, let's go to the beach. I'm going, I'm just got here. I mean, they literally like stalk you when you land. There is when for new users now, there is a um that's kind of off of the the main area that they can go to that has like little shops and things like that. There is a community hub and there are um I know Midori Linden and there's probably some other Lindens too that are working on that that have reached out to some groups that are kind of a, a smattering of good places to send through people throughout like you know um so i know like our nonprofit commons commons community is in there and there's other various both social educational other types of places that they kind of um so you could i mean if you're if you were somebody who has a community like that you could probably reach out to midori linden and see if there's a way to get your group in there i mean that so that is at least one example of trying to funnel people in to hear some good places to community wise to maybe explore and they kind of just walk through that little community hub area and check out all the booths and then can hop from there to those communities so well, all of that, they have the, the things up when you first come in the fire, like firestorm they put on the wall to, to learn how to do different things what i wish they would add in there is like how to create your own little uh subdirectories inside your inventory so that you can start putting your stuff in properly so you're not overwhelmed with all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I would hate for you to see my inventory. <laughs> I mean, I have a 51K that I goes back to 2013 because I said, oh, yeah. Yes, in January, it will make 20 years of my inventory. You can imagine what that means. <laughs> I'll say a prayer for you and light a candle. Oh, yeah, why not? It's crazy. Yeah. I look at my inventory, I'm like, what is this A1 sauce? And I read it out, and it's like a house. I was like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> and I had things given to me. At, oh, I got, I had stuff given me in the club, and I was going, what the heck is this? And I went, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then I realized I'm a prude. <laughs> I am exactly the opposite, so yeah, don't look at my inventory. <laughs> oh, no, it's just something weird that you, it, you, you click on it and it, it was a giant giant attachment <laughs> that shot you up in the air. Okay, just, just saying. It said one thing and it did another and you went, whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody having fun. <laughs> I think I've seen stuff like that, but I've used it to use, I use it to make a bounce house. I there took the script out of it and made a bounce house. Oh, that's smart. That's great. See that? I love that. I love how people just yeah, take the it. remixing of stuff. <laughs> Re reutilized. That's great. Yeah, I like that word. Reutilized. <laughs> <laughs> <Hello>, honey. <laughs> right. Right. It's. Yeah. It, I think that's the great thing about SL is that, you know, as the young man was saying that, you know, oh, I would have those kind of things, and it's like, that's what. I think probably why I've stayed with SL because it just really, you can be not can anything, right, you can be not anything of the norm, and right. that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, for a while I was a school at Raglan Shire even. All of the time. Yeah, that's like. But no, I, I was going to say, I like the nonprofit idea. I, I'm going to college right now. I have two autistic kids, and then I'm going on to university. And I like them. Um, I always support the cancer part because a lot of my family is all died from cancer. So, um, but I like the idea with the, the nonprofit is if we did a destination with the different things, like uh, someone said wrestling, and there's golfing in there, and then there's Renaissance. A lot of people that come in here are going, Well, what can you do? There's more than just the beach. If they if they actually did a nonprofit where they passed around or made sure where people got said here's the different destinations of just stuff like that, it's interactive. That would be cool. Drivers of Second Life is also really good for that because yeah. there's so many grid yeah, drives like, that you just is it? run around random places. Uh, the drivers, it, it like I mean, and it's extended too because it's also folks using boats and the trains and up like right so but yeah, there, it's a group a, a group that like are you interested in vehicles and touring around in various ways they'll do they'll do many tours of the mainland 
Um, I know, like, yeah, like, uh, so they'll, 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 they'll boat the waterways, they'll drive on the roads, they'll, and they kind of have get togethers where they'll be like, it's, it's like basically cruise night, you know, <laughs> but they'll all get together and explore together. Yeah, well, see, there you go. I've been in here since 2008 and didn't even know about it. Yeah, yeah, yep. which is a great way if you have information out of various groups is always the challenge. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, the, you know, it depends on the scenario, but especially here today where we had it all at older people, I mean, look at people's groups and then that's sort of the best way to kind of explore from there. Um, yeah, but some people like me have their groups hidden, well, some of their groups hidden, because there's some groups I don't want, like, my sister here seeing me in. I'm yes, like, mm, yeah. No, she, yeah. She don't need to see that. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. And that's respectful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Everybody's going to have their boundaries. Yeah, exactly. Some groups we're in privately. Some groups we're in publicly. Some groups. Well, the reason why I do my private is I'm getting tired there. of people hacking me. <laughs> I don't want them to know where to find me. You can hide your groups. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can, I, just it found can't. This, I just found Actually, this out. Actually, like, if the group hides the members, if the group hides the members and you hide your group, they can't find you. Okay. That's that's pretty funny. <laughs> so that's the trick to do is you have the groups hide the members so that you, they don't you can't click out and find the people in the members. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Request that they do that. Mm -hmm. They should. Yeah, that's like there's some groups where I don't mind like everyone saying like I'm a wrestler for like two companies. That's fine. Bring more eyes there. You know, I own my own sim. That's fine. I need the traffic. But there's some things I don't want like my sister here seeing. I'm like, no, you're fine. I'm just I'm hanging out. You do your thing, I'm doing mine. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a couple hours. I, I know where you go anyway, so it really doesn't Shut matter. Up, Nene. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Is that your sister? Yeah, that's yeah. my little big sister. Little big sister? Yeah, I'm like really small in SL. I'm like butt size, so yeah. Hey, little big sister. Hello. Hey, hey, little big brother. <laughs> yep, good to Yeah, I like, see, I like visiting in new places around. and like this, and I like, I like listening to different music. I used to be a DJ on the IRC. I, but again, I'm going oh. into I'm going into business healthcare and like that. So I don't have the time to invest into doing stuff like I used to in Second Life, you know. And um, on I don't so I don't do do DJs like that. I used to host a long time ago too, but my husband said, you know, that hosting is a little bit racy there, and I don't feel comfortable. So I dropped because I literally would create cards. You know, Betty Boop card or Betty, the Betty cards? Mm hmm. Tasteful, tasteful. Mm -hmm. That you wouldn't want your sister to see. And, <laughs> and, um, and I would, and I would date them, like, you know, like baseball cards, you know? And then I would say, hey, listen, if, if you pay me 400 or 4,000 Lindens, you get a, a specialty card, my card. And I had both male and female. Pay four thousand lindens to get me get one of my cards. So the question is, Ruby, do you still DJ? Mm -hmm. uh, honey, I I don't because of the co I right now I'm taking business law. I'm taking business computer applications next semester. I'm taking uh, uh, microbiology and physics. So I really don't have the time to you know. And I ah. just dropped chemistry. But you know, I I used to I used to be on MMO uh, uh, MMO radio. I was D&D &D Radio and Yaw Radio for IRC. And if you go on YouTube and you look up MMO Radio Tribute, um, in the back it'll say uh, DJ Ruby Hart in the listing. That was me. And wow, I even had a name I, I haven't heard in years. MMO Radio. I, wow. Yep. And I was DJ Ruby Hart. And so um, even they created a, a bass guitar for me uh, because they wanted to get me into another uh uh, music group too so she's even got a guitar that says um and i say uh hey welcome to D, &D radio we put the rock and role play <laughs> and then uh the the Yaw radio was for pirates of the burning sea it was a game that came out and i became the dj for that and so uh ruby heart was the dreamcast you know pirate girl 
And so I've been getting booty since 1778, so there you go. <laughs> and I would threaten that if they didn't ask for a certain song, I would either play Gunther, which you don't want me to play Gunther, or I played uh, Do Virgins Taste Better Than Those Who Are Not. That was by the Brannigan uh, Punch Hard, so I think it was. But it was all kind of medieval theme kind of thing like that. But again, okay. I played all these different types of music. I was going to say, this. because you said you used to DJ and you like to explore new places, I was like, Oh. I could use someone like you on my <laughs> uh, I was on Sam Broadcasting. That was my, my music. Oh, I, I love I can't yeah. seem to get my Sams to work anymore, so I just mm. stopped being. No, the reason why MML Radio closed down was the IIAA. Um, I was basically head over top of a bunch of departments, and the main branch was out of Arizona, but I was in Michigan at the time. And so I handled a lot of people and their paperwork and stuff. Because of my background, I used to be a web designer. And we had people from um, Scotland. We had people up in, in Canada. You know what I'm saying? All over the place. I had uh, Sweden. That was another friend of mine. That's He created this song for me, uh, Kaiser Chiefs, by, you know, for Ruby. But um, just basically, you know, I get what you're saying, though. It's hard to get a good DJ, you know, and it's because a lot of people want to go in there and not pay anything. Or they go in there and there's, they don't have dance, dance HUDs. And they don't want to click on the huds for dancing because then they end up looking like they're getting mauled. You know, that's why I don't use them. You know, I like the ones that have the line dancing, you know, the fun ones there. Yeah. We click on it and it makes you dance. You know, those things like that, I'm cool with. But, I, yeah, if they're going to put me upside down with a dress, uh-uh, homie, don't do that. <laughs> Not at yeah, my age. Yeah, the thing <laughs> is, it's terrible like, dances in some of the dance huds. Yeah. The thing is, um... What Nene and I are trying to do is we're trying to create, like, at least a weekly event, you know? Yeah. But the people we hire to DJ, they start, they start off good, and then they end up playing, like, Frozen. It's like, no, what are you doing? Frozen? It, it's you got to be kidding me. It's happened. We've gone from Manson to Let It Go. It's like, you can never play here again. I mean, there's, there's Siamese that plays the wolf. I mean, come on. Seriously? Play different shit. You don't have to play Frozen. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no reason for you. Just, all you can do is just say, this is the theme of my club, and this is what I accept and what I don't accept, and, you know, hey, work around it like that. If you want to play Frozen, play it on your sim, on your time off. There you go. <laughs>